these guys have superior positioning, as you can see right there. And uh, I've told my cavalry to follow me because most of them are skirmishers. So they do have bows and they will be able to hopefully weaken the enemy just a little bit. Hello reformers and welcome back to the last days and our Uruk adventures. Now when we left off we were helping out a little bit with the attack against Gondor. Uh, which, well we should say attacks shouldn't we because in general everything is just going so badly for Gondor and it is going from bad to worse for them and uh, well You'll see exactly what I mean about that in just a second. As you can see, I have a little bit of, you know, a couple of prisoners here for potential food because I did take a point in pr prisoner management, no, inventory management. And uh, as you can see, we've got a little bit more space, which is obviously going to make a big difference to how many, you know, how many pieces of loot we can take. All right, so otherwise, you can see here, Minas Tirith is under siege. And, well, it's actually not going well for Dunlendings, as you can see right there. Prince Imrahil just went in, and he's basically going to make things, I, I would say, probably impossible for them. I actually came down here as soon as I could, because I was resting at the advanced camp, and, uh, you know, just to regain some of my HP and everything, you know, recruit a couple more units and everything, and, uh, well, you can see here exactly what has gone on, and they are now attempting to run away, which is actually not even a bad thing. Hey, come on, chief. Get in there. Go. Why, why, is, why is he not going in? Why is he not going in to help out his friends? Is it because he's trying to do the siege again? Yes, I think it probably is. Alright, we're going to go and help then. We're going to go and help Chief Fudrheim. And uh, we'll see how it is. 153 against 229. I think we may have overestimated ourselves a little bit. But uh, we might be able to do a nice little bit of a... A little bit of an attack here against the prince, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit dubious about this. You can see we've already been on this battlefield once before, and it has not gone exceedingly well. So I don't exactly know what's going to happen here, but I guess we'll just try our very best. I mean, we have 20 of my own units on the battlefield. Personally, I don't want to use them. I would much rather allow the Dunlending's vassals to do their thing and, you know, take the brunt of the assault. I know that sounds extremely selfish, but it's true. It takes a long time to level up units, and uh, obviously it's just the inconvenience of it all, you know, being able to just continue to raid and siege and, uh, you know, generally skirmish with the enemy is definitely something that we are going to want to continue doing, but obviously we can't do that if we get eliminated by someone and uh yeah it's obviously oh no wow look at that that was a lot of damage but thankfully i have a lot of hp so i shouldn't have to worry too much and i should be very careful about these enemies right here there we go all right everything's going pretty nicely actually they don't seem to have too many gondorian archers i feel like the archer count usually has a lot to do with whether people are gonna actually be deadly enough because even even if you're playing orcs it feels to me like if you don't have any archers you're going to be sorely outmatched by the opponent and new enemies have already arrived that's crazy that already they have already arrived okay well we're going to see how that goes i don't exactly know whether they're going to prevail oh they're actually Wow, they're actually sending in quite a few units here. This is a bit worrying, especially considering well, most of the units coming in are cavalry and indeed infantry. But obviously, as I say, if they're not going to get any more archers than these couple that they're sending in right now, it's really not going to result in anything good for them. So we'll see how it goes. So far, I think we're doing pretty nicely in terms of our kills. And bear in mind that, of course... We are going to try and get the highest kill streak possible. I actually, let's actually just take a look at what I need to do here. I actually need to eliminate Lothlorien parties and things like that. Ah, bring 10 enemy prisoners to him. Ah, well that's going to be, I think, pretty possible from this, from this particular battle. So I think that's good. And otherwise, I think we are fine. So let's just continue to do damage here. Whoa, I, actually, are we fine? 
Are we fine? It seems like I have gone extremely deep into enemy territory. This is not good. This is not good at all. I don't know how I'm going to get these various units out of here into a safer position, but I, I guess we're just going to have to oh, do this the old-fashioned way and just dive deep into... Never mind. Well, dive deep into death by the looks of things. Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. All right, well, that was actually not even that bad. We did eliminate 71 of the enemy, but our allies took a big brunt of the damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retreat here. We didn't lose anyone because obviously I didn't really send my units in too much. And let's have a look. 107 against 155. I think this might work, but it really depends. I mean, 107 against 155. We had how many initially? I think we had about 150, so we eliminated quite a bit in comparison to what we lost. But obviously, I think it's going to come down to our own units, most likely, and I don't really want to rely on my own army to help out a, uh, well, I don't really want to say a random lord, because that's kind of insulting, but it's true, you know? Uh, yeah, I'd much rather use my units to go after the elves or something like that, and to reinforce Moria, something along those lines would be quite advantageous for us, but uh, I, I guess doing this is okay as well. I mean, mm, Dunlendings is obviously allied with us, so them being eliminated is not going to be very good. Well, should we say their lords being eliminated, because obviously their whole faction is not going to lose from one battle, but obviously they do only own, I think it is just two bases in the game, so it is obviously kind of kind of dicey. It's kind of dicey. If they, you know, if they lose a couple in a row, you know, they're, they're done, you know? They, I think it's only two. Don't they only have two bases? So it is kind of imperative we help them out a little bit more than the basic amount. So anyway, let's see if I can do some damage to these archers. They are going to be shooting me. Uh, maybe. Wow. Look at that. Our two-handed weapon proficiency. Would you have ever imagined that? Bear Uruk all the way back then when we first started this series and he was barely able to kill a tribal goblin or a tribal orc, should I say. A mountain goblin, tribal orc, you know, enemies like that. And now he's capable of slaughtering Gondorian soldiers by the tens, not the hundreds just yet, but uh, yes, by the tens. And, uh, well... It's actually not even going that badly. Durgash is getting a couple of kills as well. It's actually kind of a nice idea that we took him off his mount. I feel like that was the biggest problem. I think someone actually mentioned that taking him off his mount actually makes him into a much more useful companion. And that's true. He seems to be doing a great job. And holding position right here has actually proven to be much better than charging straight, straight ahead. So using a little bit of patience and allowing the, the the foolish men to run into us is certainly the way to go and essentially has cut all their morale down like nothing else and you can see here that the infantry they're not even defending their archers look at this look at the slaughter that's currently going on and their the infantry are just twiddling their thumbs they're not really doing anything it's kind of amazing and uh, I think what we can do now is we can try and focus a little bit more on the infantry as more cavalry and more infantry come in. But you can see here that, look at this, we've literally lost only about six units in comparison to the enemy who've, who have lost 66. So there you go, pretty crazy. Wow, 36 units total we've eliminated as well. Okay, we have to be a bit cautious here because these are archers of Gondor. I think they're probably quite good at what they do. I think I'm probably going to get eliminated soon if I am not careful. You know what? Should we just charge straight on in here? Or maybe not. I don't exactly know because, I mean, just look at our trackers. They still have arrows. That's the cool thing about Uruks and Orc archers. Because in general, you know, obviously elves, they have a much higher range when it comes to using their bows and everything. But Uruks obviously have a pretty short range and Orcs shorter still. And uh, it seems to actually be quite beneficial because they're not wasting their arrows as much. They only start firing when they're in much closer distance to the opponent. And I think that's pretty good. 
does make things a little bit easier for me at least. So I don't have to micromanage them as much as you would potentially with elves, because obviously elves are going to be firing as soon as they see the enemy, even if it's halfway across the map, because they generally have this skill to do so, you know, they would potentially be able to get kills from that far distance, but they then end up losing many more arrows than you would otherwise want them to, so pretty good, it's pretty good, even though it may seem like a pretty big drawback of the or Uruks and Orcs and everything to have such a short range, it's actually not bad for arrow conservation. Ah, now we're going to be having some difficulties. Yes, veteran knights coming in here. That is not very good. Uh, at least we took off his, well, took out his mount, and uh, hopefully we will not be thrusted upon by his blade. Ah, yes, that's the name of the game, so to speak, actually. It is the name of the game, technically. Yeah, yes. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so I think we're done, actually. I know that there's still 29 remaining, but I think this is actually it. Bolzog. Bolzog got himself eliminated. Of course he died. Ugh. Yes, of course he's dead. Oh, well, never mind. That is not particularly good. And I am being eliminated as well, maybe? This is actually not very good. Okay, I'm actually gonna... Ah, yes. That is not good at all. That is actually very bad. Okay, you know what? Let's tell my units to charge straight on in here. I don't know whether that's a good idea. I personally feel like it's not a good idea and I should just probably retreat. How many do they have? Do they still have 28? Yeah, they still have 28. This is actually pretty bad. Okay, I'm gonna actually get out of there. 71 against 29. We can still join the battle. So that is all that I need, really, because I just need to be back alive and allow the enemies to charge into our lines. Well, it looks to me like the opponent is taking a very defensive posture at the moment. I am going to be using my shield here for the foreseeable future because I don't want one of these archers to get a lucky shot on me and then take me out as a result. You can see here that our infantry are coming in now. That is pretty fantastic. I very much appreciate their assistance because, well, I think we were going to have some problems here either way. And uh, I don't mind sacrificing a couple. Oh, oh no. Okay, that was close. That was very, very close indeed. I actually thought to myself that I was dead there for a second, because you know how it is. If you get stopped and you're on a mount and there are infantry close by, you are more than likely going to die. So that was very, very lucky there. And uh, I think we're done. I think that is actually it. I was waiting. I was literally just waiting for the opponent to come toward us, and they, they didn't. They just stood there in a shield wall formation. And uh, yeah... Obviously, we had to go and meet them. All right, so there you go. That is a pretty nice battle right there. Didn't lose any units whatsoever, actually, but it's only 29, so I guess that's how it is. Look at that. 88 rank points. That's exactly what I mean. That's exactly the reason why, in the past, when I have helped out a lord or something along those lines, and I have not been awarded rank points of any kind, or a very small amount, then I'm just very surprised, because obviously I've helped this guy with a very large battle that he was probably going to lose. And we ended up achieving victory and a huge amount of rank points in the process. So that's very nice. He managed to escape. Of course, we will then be able to take a whole bunch of Gondorian units. And uh, I'm just going to use these for food in just a second. Otherwise, a huge amount of good quality metal scraps. Very nice indeed to see that. And I think I'm actually going to go and sell in a minute. So let's see, is there anyone else around here? Ah, Herluin is here. Right. Well, I could technically go to East Osgiliath or I could go to Ker Andros. I think I could go over there. Now, what is what is the chief actually doing? Oh, chief, what? Fudrheim was, was eliminated? What was he killed by? He was killed by the prisoner train by the looks of things. Are you serious? He was killed by the prisoner train. Did I have to be that stringent about making sure that he was okay. Well, I mean, you can see here that Chief Wolf only has one unit available for battle. That is pretty crazy. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so Ker Andros is obviously now ours, so let us go in there, and uh, I think I'm going to probably recruit a couple more people. Let's sell a bunch of this, and I'm going to get some maggoty bread, I suppose. There we go. And what about the smithy? Oh, that has a pretty decent amount of uh, 
decent amount of money. So I'm going to take all of that. Thank you very much. There we go. Let's go into the barracks as well and see if they have anyone. Oh, yes, they have 26 wild men. I will be taking those. Thank you very much. They're going to level up very, very quickly and uh, hopefully be able to assist us in the next battle. But for now, I think what I'm going to try and do is I literally wanted to try and help at Minas Tirith, but I don't think that's going to happen for the moment as it still has 300 or so units there. And it feels to me like the Dunlending's faction is not really able to do anything with it at the moment. So let's take a quick zoom out here and see exactly what's going on. So you can see here that Gondor is still absolutely fine. They have literally only lost one fief in the form of Ker Andros and otherwise they I think they can probably take this back. I think it is possible to take it back because of course it is not raised to the to the ground or anything like that. So I think it should be fine. Otherwise there is Funeral pyre over here and a burial mound, but that is... Wait a minute, is that a... That's a burial mound, isn't it? Is that is that an Oath of Vengeance or is that a, is that one of theirs? I'm actually unsure about that. I'm not familiar with all of the names just yet. Oh well, never mind. I think our main course of action should be to take these prisoners to Master Berza and uh, see if we can help out Moria a little bit more with the elves. Alright, so we have come to Moria territory uh, after a little bit of resting, and we are now attacking a Lothlorien caravan. I only need two more for the quest. I did manage to speak to Master Berza, who was actually a Gundabad lord, and uh, I think he's actually the leader of Gundabad, and uh, yeah, he was very happy with that. He gave us 40 rank points for our efforts for the prisoners, and uh, yeah, otherwise... We are, uh, we're pretty good. We're actually doing pretty well. Our uh, Dunnish units leveled up a little bit. They are now warriors. And uh, hopefully there'll be night wolves and uh, wolf guards in no time. But first, we must deal with some pesky elves. I don't exactly know whether we're going to be able to do this, considering... I know, I know you know, we, we outnumber them. Basically, two to one. Exactly two to one. Well, actually, no, we have some allies. But the point is, we do outnumber them. But, they're elves, you know, they are elves, so this is going to be maybe a little bit tricky, we'll see. We've just got to get our forces into position here, and then we will be able to attack. Mm, as it is always the case, whenever we fight elves, we really do need to be on the offensive a little bit more than on the defensive, like with Gondor, for example, even though their archers are not even that bad. The fact is, is that you do need to be very on the ball when you're fighting elves because they are going to shoot you in the face very easily, actually. I'm just very pleased I have this weapon. I really am extremely pleased I have this weapon. It is so, so powerful for us right now. Having this swing speed and being able to run into the archer's line is so, so good because I'm able to kill, I don't know, three, four units every single time I'm able to do that especially considering they're not blocking me at all. So it is much, much easier than using the Nazgul sword. And it does offer that little bit of extra protection because of course I'm using that shield. Yes, okay. Oh, this guy's a little bit more heavily armored. Yes, a high swordsman. Oh, very good. All right, so there's 21 enemies taken out. That was easy enough. We actually didn't lose many people at all. We actually only lost one of our lower tier Dunnish warriors, which is very nice indeed. As you can see, I obviously did sell all my scraps, and we have a huge amount of man flesh in our inventory now. All right, so we are now going to make our way over... I think there was actually another caravan this way. Hmm... I think they might be over here somewhere. I actually have no idea where they'd be traveling if they were coming through here because where is the caravan going to go here? I have no idea because, I mean, I would assume they would have traveled to Rohan before, but now that that is no longer available, they're uh, getting a little bit weird. But, oh uh, well, yes, uh, I have received reports, by the way, that Moria is now weakened. 
So that is not good at all. If you take a look at the faction strength here, where is Moria? It is there. Yes, it is just below 2,000 now. So if I'm able to complete a couple of these tasks, maybe that is going to make a bit of a difference. You can see here that I actually did take a task from Whip Snotgore, and uh, we're going to try and get to Bjorning Village as soon as possible. I have not killed any Lothlorien Master Archers, which I have no idea why. I think it's just kind of difficult. Oh, we actually have to... Ah, never mind. We have to defeat eight caravans instead of four. Yes, we've already done the four. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to go to Bjorning Village as soon as possible then, and I'll fight anyone I find along the way, apart from these two. Well, that possibly wasn't such a good start to this battle. We are up against another caravan, but these guys have superior positioning, as you can see right there. And uh, I've told my cavalry to follow me because most of them are skirmishers. So they do have bows and they will be able to hopefully weaken the enemy just a little bit. And it might make sense for us to actually just charge straight on against the enemy. You can see how many archers they have. It's ludicrous how many archers they have and hopefully I will be able to deal a little bit of damage to their archer line and try and disrupt them as much as possible. Obviously they are going to try and fight back. Their infantry is actually making a bit of an effort to defend their archers as well which doesn't usually happen. I am losing quite a few of my skirmishers but I suppose that is just the cost of this particular fight. I didn't really want to have that be a thing, but uh, yeah, I guess that's just how it is. Anyway, otherwise, many of our Dunish warriors did level up. They are not wolf guards just yet. They are, I think, veteran warriors. And uh, I think one more level will probably get them to where we need them to be. So that's pretty easy. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Otherwise, uh, yeah, our archers are a little bit too far away, aren't they? Yes, we've eliminated 23 though. Only 10 enemies remaining. And it seems like most of them are probably going to be running away or just about to be killed. So that is pretty good. It seems like elves are not too difficult anymore. They used to be the bane of my existence, but uh, they have become quite the prey nowadays, haven't they? Instead of being hunted by them, we are now doing the hunting. So that's pretty good. All right, there you go. Gorbag was the only one to get eliminated there, but he's going to be back on his feet in no time. And we do have another good quality metal scrap. Oh yes, by the way, I did level up and I spent my points in inventory management again. Yes, so we now have even more space. So I think two inventory management is probably going to be sufficient for what we need to do. And I'm going to continue leveling charisma, intelligence, charisma, intelligence, etc, etc, so that we can eventually get more leadership and eventually get more trainer skill. I think that is going to be pretty good. Otherwise, I think that's actually it for this episode. Next time, I will probably have done a couple more fights against caravans, and uh, we will be ready to hand in the quest, or at least maybe, maybe one caravan off the completion of the quest, and then we will be able to continue helping Moria as much as possible. Maybe we'll try and find a little bit of a siege with them if they are actually capable of doing that or maybe we can defend against some opponents otherwise i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time